right, all right. Yeah, baby. You know, I just love this music. I mean, it is the epitome of baby making music. And I'm all about baby making music. For sure. You know, you look at me and a lot of women, this has happened. You look at me, bam, you get pregnant. That's all there's to it. Just, 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 look, at just look at it. I think I'm leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go home. Hey, JR, <laughs> cut me out of this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Adventure Basil Show, the best damn radio podcast show ever. That's right. It's Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022. I want to bring you fantastic guests who are the movers and the shakers in world news, entertainment, authors, politics, and sports figures from all over the world. I'm Basil your humble and very beautiful host, <laughs> along with our prom queen of the show, Janice Hermson. <laughs> I went from Bella the Bull to the prom queen. <laughs> prom queen oh. and our brother of love and chief engineer, Mr. Four Eyes himself, Mr. J.R. Oh. Quitman, looking good with them glasses on. Mr. Hell yeah. Janice himself is in the building. Oh, man, you are sexy as hell. You know that? You truly are. Oh, I know. No, you, oh, you, you oh, knew I that already. Right. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I don't have that kind of ego. Thank God. Confidence. It's confidence. That's what it is. Confidence. <laughs> we are indeed broadcasting our show and streaming live on Twitch at A Pinch of Basil, on Facebook at Basil Fans, on Twitter.com at Basil Fans, on YouTube. And I want you to go to YouTube right now, for God's sakes, and go to Basil V Comedian, and then you'll see where it says a pinch of basil click it watch it hey you know what why don't you just join us for god's sakes click that you right know there. yeah right next to it there's that's a little thing right and, and that's all you got to do and of course don't forget through anchor and our eight different outlets including spotify apple Je podcast just to name a couple this is a great show to listen to and it takes and let's not forget greek beat radio that takes us all over the world from australia South Africa, Europe, North America, and Central and South America. And for those wonderful people who are listening in the Ukraine, we are with you. We love you. We support you. God, you know, listen, man, uh, I, I'm going to try and make this enjoyable um, because uh, it, it's a lot of hell going over there and we're feeling your pain. We really, really are. Uh, so make sure, and we even love to hear from you, the greatest listeners in the world. We want you to comment. That's right. We want you to comment what you know what we're talking about, and we'll even answer you know our listeners as well. For we love hearing your questions, especially with today's guest. Uh, you can call in toll free eight four four five two three two six three three, and or you can comment right on Basil Fans on Facebook. That's right. Go to B A S I L E F A N S. Like I said, we really want to hear from our special listeners. Uh, so go to the social outlets I just mentioned. And even if you want to email us, our wonderful princess uh, will go ahead and email you back or actually text oh, you back. You. Info. What was that, Jeff? I said, oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, you're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're, you are the epitome of beauty. Info at a pinch of basil. Info at a pinch of basil. Follow us. Join us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Basil Fans, B A S I L E F A N S. Hey, this weekend, I'm in Staten Island, New York for a grown up Greek in America, Vendusa Palooza World Tour at Holy Trinity St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church. Hey, April 1st. Oh, by the way, you can go tickets at 718 Four nine four zero six five eight. If they have any more left, I guess the phones have been going off the hook. Uh, April first, Thalian Hall in Wilmington, North Carolina. April 29th at Antiamos in Detroit, Michigan. Find out more. Just go to my website. That's right. JR's got it up right now at basillive.com. B a s i l e l i v e dot com. And check out my dates, fundraisers, corporate events, private parties, theaters, and comedy clubs. Email me at basil at basil live. And in a few minutes. Uh, this is a guest that JR and I were excited about having a good friend. Of course, Janice, too, who is a huge football aficionado. You know, I'm like an afterthought these days. What is that? 
You know what? Let me tell you something. You know we love you. Oh, yeah. By the way, yeah. You She's are the here. football aficionado. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. If you know the answer, you're brilliant. Okay. There is a football team in Chicago, and they are called the Chicago Bears. Oh, my God. I didn't even know that. You know, I was just reading the question yeah, right, right here. Right, you know, right, sure. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Basil. You're an awesome guy. <laughs> Yeah. Our guest, NFL great and good friend, Mr. Pete Stajanovich, will be with us shortly. Um, guys, uh, I, JR, how you doing? Janice, how you doing? I'm going to the air horn button like 85 times, I think. I, I, I added it to my audio board this week. And, and... <laughs> I love that sound effect. That's the sound effect that I use whenever I come in with the mood into my bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Honey, yeah. I'm here. And she knows, you know, she immediately goes into the penalty so box. Is that you, <laughs> is that you passing gas? Or? Yeah, I don't want to brag. Listen, my, my toots make noise, and it's it's music to some people. Absolutely. Wow. wow oh, wow, my God. Wow, so right, I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm out of here. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Janice, anything cooking uh, news-wise that we should be – that we should be uh, – interested in because i know there was a yesterday was a big uh by the way michael gersh is listening to us um rosa preston is listening to us a uh, florence uh let me see frederica i love that name frederica the thank bears. you so much the what a the man i'll tell you what she's yeah That's go bears she's bears. a chicago girl evidently rosa uh, how's she doing man uh, uh, napoli let me see nap napoli napoli <laughs> preston Rosa Napoli. Wow. And then I got to tell you something funny. I, I was doing a show last week. Janice, you're going to love this. And this woman comes up to me after my show with her husband. She goes, do you remember me? I'm like, oh, my God. And she goes, I haven't seen you in, in X amount of years. And it was like 43 years. I'm like, oh, God. And I, the only thing I asked her, do we share a child? And she goes, no. I said, okay, continue talking. <laughs> and she goes, I had a crush on you in high school. She was in 10th grade. And I'm like, oh, wow. And she brought me my yearbook to sign again. <laughs> and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Wow. And it was, but you know what? It was so sweet of her. And I was just caught off guard. She was a real sweetheart. Um, so it, it was really, really cute to, to see that. And her husband was with her and it was, it was really, really nice. And they came to the show and for all the people that came to the show, um, uh, over at snappers comedy club, um, what a great weekend. I truly had a great time. And the people over at, uh, St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox church, I got a chance to see Gu our good friend, Congressman Gus Bilarakis and, um, and, uh, his eminence, uh, Archbishop Nikita from, uh, the UK, was there uh, another good friend and it was really cool to see them it really was and nice. rosa says that you were on the reflection with it says we were on the reflection with you oh wow on the ship there you go yes rosa i hope you had a good time with me sweetheart <laughs> i hope uh, it, was, it was what a great fun time um it you know it's it's great to do uh, that great ship you know the people over at um at celebrity uh cruise lines are just phenomenal and uh what a great company to work for they they really are so i, I have to tell you i was really impressed with that nice. very good that's awesome oh wow yeah. they y'all breaking up on me a little bit over here hmm. oh that's not good because we got you no. Out of here. no that's not that's not good at all can you guys hear me okay yeah can, a little bit too yeah. loud now, but yeah we can hear you Okay, I'll I'll I'll, yeah, I'll beat good. off. I'll, I'll go back rather. Whoa! <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not that kind of show, sir. <laughs> I, 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 think, to... I don't think I belong here. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean to say that. In fact, I know I don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the guest. I hope. I hope the guest heard that he's waiting on us in the lobby. There, Basil. <laughs> is he really? He is. He is. I'm gonna bring him on in here. Please do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh wow. <laughs> I can't believe. Is that is that my good friend, Mr. Pete Stianovich? Is that who? That is? How you doing, buddy? How you doing, brother? You doing okay? I'm doing well, man. It's good to see you. 
It's good seeing you. Before Pete, before we go any further, I gotta I gotta read this bio because um, I want people to know who the hell you are. And if you know if they're not a football guy or a person or a woman, a man, doesn't matter, kid. Um, number one, well, let me go. Born 1967 from Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Uh, American football place kicker of Macedonian descent. And that's the way I finally realized that we share the same religion, Greek Orthodox, because I had no idea you and I were laughing back and forth with each other. Okay. Anyway, he played uh, with the Miami Dolphins, Kansas City Chiefs, and briefly the St. Louis Rams in the NFL. He attended college at Indiana U. IU, well, it's it's a school of some sort. He, where he played football and soccer, a first-team All-Pro in 1992. Mr. Stojanovic uh, finished his career in the top 35 in NFL history in all kicking categories. He led the NFL in scoring in 1992. His game-tying 58-yard field goal in 1991 wildcard playoff set a record for the longest field goal in NFL playoff history, which has since been tied by Graham Gano. And I say we go after him and, have, you know, we got to get rid of him. You know, that's all I'm <laughs> we saying. Got to, yeah, we should. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. In 97, a regular season game versus the Denver Broncos at Arrowhead. Mr. Stojanovic kicked a 54-yard field goal as time expired to beat Denver. Pete is married, has three beautiful daughters, which I can attest to. They are gorgeous. He coaches a high school girls and boys soccer uh, at his daughter's local high school. Mr. Stojanovic served as the kicking double for Sean Young. Okay. Is she as hot as as, – is is she hot? I just want to know. I thought we were ending the program right there. You said it all. (laughs) (laughs) We're done. (laughs) It's good seeing you. I'll talk to you later, Basil. Good night, everybody. (laughs) We actually wound up – Pete used to own a club along with his brother, and and it was called Kickers. And I did not know anything too much about it. And we started hitting it off. I hit it off with Bill. Then I met Pete. And I'm like, you know – and there used to be a, a kicker. <laughs> he beats the yard. He goes, that's me. I'm like, and we hit it off there. And when I find out you went to IU and, and I started going back and forth with you because of the Purdue thing that we had back and forth. And then your brother played over at State, uh, you know, Michigan State. And then you and I would go back and forth. And, of course, it was kind of funny because we we're talking about, you know, the, the Oak Bucket. And we started laughing about that. I remember made you a bet. I said, Purdue's going to be all over you know, you guys. There's no two ways about it. Because I bet you a hundo. I said, all right. By the time the game was over, I never wadded a $100 bill as tightly as I couldn't threw it at him. Because I was so pissed <laughs> that we lost. Hey, Pete, welcome to the show, brother, man. Good to have you on here. Thanks, Basil. Man, it's good to be with you guys this evening. Uh, you know what? We're huge football fans. And and uh, Jr. played ball as well, and um, we're just you know kind of excited. Pete, a couple of things. Uh, tell my audience about your wonderful family. Number one, because that's probably the proudest thing you got going. You're like me. That's the one thing you can have all the football accolades around you, but it's your family that. Well, that it, it is. It is all about family first, and uh, like you said, Basil, I'm a, a happily married man with three beautiful daughters. Uh, I've got a wonderful family. I've got a daughter that's graduating uh, high school uh, this year and uh, still waiting on her college choice. Uh, I have another daughter that's a sophomore, and then I have an eight-year-old who's uh, doing extremely well in dance. So uh, very proud of my, my three daughters and my extended family as well. And uh, I've got a lot of love and support throughout the years. Uh, through the family, and uh, obviously it's very important to not only me, I'm sure, to a lot of people out there. Oh, no two ways about it, Pete. And, and you know what? Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's a great feeling, and then you'll wonder when, you're, when your daughter graduates high school, as your other daughters will, where the hell did time go? Yeah, it's, it's going fast, I can tell you that. It is, I mean, it feels just like yesterday. My wife and I, you know, Danielle and I, it feels just like yesterday. We just had our first kid, you know. And here we are, 18 years later. Um, I, by the way, I failed to mention her name, <laughs> my, my lovely <laughs> wife, Daniela. Um, but anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it, it, did, it, is, it is going by, you know, and that you know, just calls for uh, treasuring every, every moment even more, you know. Uh, it just it goes too fast and you got to, you know, spend as much time as you can with these kids, you know. No two ways about it. Pete, let us know a, a couple of things. First of all, um, you were a standout in soccer. 
uh, growing up. And by the way, Danielle, how are you, sweetheart? Good to see you. <laughs> she so, would say hi to you, Basil, but she's not here right now. I think she's with one of the girls uh, at dance. So she'll be here shortly. <laughs> well, they usually send you for dance. It's all right. I see yeah, you. I opted out tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they really. Um, tell us about your career as, as a soccer player. And I, I know you were highly recruited by just about every school that had a soccer program in the NC2A. Um, and I know that you you wanted to play soccer, and uh, but you also had a, a, a love for Michigan, uh, for Big Blue. I, and this is one of the stories I love. I love hearing about because you go and visit. All right. First of all, tell us your story. I, I want to hear it. How the whole thing went well, down. We'll, we'll get to that Schembechler story in a minute. Uh, you know, leading up to that. Um, yeah. Soccer was my first love, obviously. Uh, my dad pushed me into playing back in the seventies when soccer really wasn't much of a sport here in this country. Uh, but uh, that's the that's the the road I took, you know, and that's the road we chose early on. Uh, but my my neighbor, our neighbor, was a football coach at the local Catholic school, and I was in the fifth grade before I kicked my first football. And he, you know, he talked my parents into letting me come out and play football, and reminded them that all I would do was kick and nothing else, and I wouldn't be touched in practice, I wouldn't be involved in any physical contact. They knew the potential and where I was at with the game of soccer at the time. So they really didn't want me to, you know, get hurt or, you know, risk any injury. So that's kind of how the football thing started. But I continued to play soccer. And, um, you know, uh, like you said, you know, I just about had every major university in the nation uh, offer me scholarships. I uh, was one of the top players coming out my senior year. And uh, that's really the big reason why I chose Indiana University ultimately. Um, if I hadn't played soccer, I probably would have stayed locally and took Bo up on his scholarship offer at Michigan because I grew up right down the street from Ann Arbor. So um, as it turned out, uh, I did have my meeting with Bo and uh, obviously respected by many people. And, you know, as a kid growing up in the area here, why, you know, why wouldn't you want to go play football at Michigan in front of 100,000 people every weekend? But um you know, it was a, it was a hard choice for me. It really was. I, I I loved Michigan football. I loved Indiana soccer, and but you know, Indiana really gave me the best opportunity to be able to play both and pursue both in college, and that's what I did. Um, you know, I had uh, I had Bobby Knight's uh, Cessna at my disposal. That was one of the big things that uh, that kind of you know swayed me in that direction. I just I had transportation everywhere to play three games on the weekend, you know, a football game on Saturday and a soccer game on Friday and Sunday. So um, I was flying around with two pilots, uh, not unusual to hit three different towns in three different days and playing three games uh, every weekend in the fall. Um, and, um, but, you know, that's what I signed up for. And, um, you know, I, I did it as long as I could until my senior year when I finally had to I had to make a, a very, very tough decision on what to do with, with my, my career moving forward. And I mean, obviously I couldn't play both at the professional level. So it was either one or the other. So, you know, I, I ended up choosing the football route. You know, I think at the time, the, the best thing for me was to, to, to stay here locally in the States and, and try to make it in the NFL. I had a lot of potential. I was the number one kicker coming out of college out of Indiana my senior year. So uh, I think I, I made the right choice. You know, I was, I was happy with the choice, although it was very difficult when I made the decision to quit soccer and hang up the cleats. Ironically, the year I did retire or quit, I don't like to use the word quit as much as I'd like to use the word just retired from soccer. My senior year at Indiana, they won a national championship, and that kind of – you know, <laughs> that sucks. You yeah. are. That so, I don't know. Maybe I was the problem going in. You know, I don't know. But you know, they had won the national championship in '82 and '83. Uh, in '84, they made it to the uh, finals and lost to Clemson in the final. Wow! So they went to the big game three years in a row, winning two of those games. And then in '85, the year I came out, I don't know, five or six of us top. High school all Americans went to Indiana. We were the kind of the Fab Five or Fab Six, if you will, of uh, 
IU soccer back in 85, kind of like the, the freshman five here at Michigan, Michigan, right? Uh, the basketball yeah. guys. So, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't do, uh, you know, my freshman, sophomore, junior year, we didn't, we didn't do much. We, I think we got knocked out in the quarterfinal quarterfinals of the soccer cup in my junior year. And then I, re, you know, I, I retired my senior year and they won a national championship, but that's kind of the road I took. You know, I used to play for the national team, which was another big thing for me, which made it even more difficult to kind of walk away from the game because I was able to travel around the world at a young age. You know, I was 16, 17, 18 years old. Wow. Uh, been to many places around the world, including, uh, ironically, Russia, as we see it today. Uh, you know, I spent two weeks in Leningrad back in 80, I think it was in 85, January of 85. And I remember being around uh, – you know all the KGB agents back then, and and, and practicing, and just the uh, just the way things were back there was kind of odd back then. But um, yeah, I, I was very yeah. fortunate to see the world and travel with the team, and you know probably took you know took me to a lot of places that uh, I probably would have never been. You know, and um, so it's, it's you, been a great it's been a great ride. Yeah, I'm sure it has, and it, it you know and it. it, it been fan, phenomenal for you but you had to at least look at the aspect of as a football player versus a soccer player in the pros you were going to make nothing as compared as you would at, with an nfl contract so i can understand the reason why you did what you well did. there's probably there's probably a couple things basil that you know really you know was heavy on my decision making process one of them obviously at the time and you're talking you're talking like 88 89 uh, when there was really no soccer here in the States. So any opportunity for me to play soccer, even though I played for the national team, and I'm going to name drop some guys here in a minute, but uh, going overseas back then was really our only option because there was no money here in the States. You couldn't play professional soccer here because there just wasn't any soccer. Um, so, you know, players like Tony Miola, who was the National and World Cup goalkeeper for the U.S., Tab Ramos, John Harks, Mike Windishman, Troy Snyder. These are all guys that I used to play with on the junior national team. And all these guys went on and played overseas. Most of these guys went over and played overseas because that's where the money was at. If they were going to make any money playing and make a living, that's where they were going. But the other factor, too, Basil, was the risk factor in going over there. It's not like today. Today's a little – it's a little more – accepted with American players going there and foreign pay players coming here to the MLS, it kind of goes both ways nowadays. It's more accepted. So uh, there's a lot of American players there. There's a lot of foreign players here. So the risk of going over there back then was a little higher because they didn't want to see the American players coming there and taking up positions when they weren't really coming here to play. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, so that was a big factor too. And, and, you know, the longevity was a big thing. You know, if I, if I had played a, you know, if I was a running back or a wide receiver or a DB or a defensive lineman, whatever, if I had played any other position on the football field, you know, my decision might've gone the other way because the, the, the risk of injury, you know, so knowing, knowing that I could kick a football in the NFL for 10, 12, 15 years and not get hurt, I mean, that was a, that was a, you know, that weighed heavy on my decision, but again, it was not an easy decision for me. Probably the hardest decision I've had to make in my life, uh, walking away from the game that I love so dearly. We got a couple of questions from the audience. Um, first of all, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that one, um, that Hey JR, one, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, Pete. How you doing, sir? <laughs> good, Thanks man. Good. Us. So the one that's in the chat, we'll hold off on that one until we get to the NFL parts of the talk. But um, okay. I have a question that um, tracked back to what you were saying. Um, you said you didn't start winning much until <clears throat> your uh, senior year. What was that? Eighty nine. So was that the uh, was that Andre Ware the Heisman campaign for Andre Ware? Uh, I believe you? Andre. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna brag a little bit about that draft class that it came out in eighty nine. I don't. I think Andre Ware might have been. Now I know the top five picks, and Andre Ware wasn't in it. He might have been an. He might have been 89 or 90. I'm not sure. I came out in 89, the class of 89. The right. top five picks in that draft, and probably still the top five of all time today, was Troy Aikman. You had Tony Mandarich. You had uh, Deion Sa Barry Sanders, Deion Sanders, and Derek Thomas, who was a teammate of mine in Kansas City. That that was, you know, you're talking 
and Tony Mandrich was the was the bust because we all know what happened there with him and uh, the steroid use, uh, unfortunately. But uh, a great guy nonetheless. But four of those guys, the other four of those guys, are in the Hall of Fame. And to this day, it still remain, remains the number one draft class in the top five of all time. And wow. um, That's I wasn't picked number six. I didn't go till way later, but I did get drafted <laughs> that. Uh, I did get drafted that year in '89. Gotcha. Okay. The, yeah. the, the, Jr. I don't know if you had another question for him. Um, yeah. Well, now the other one was uh, if you want to go ahead and get to the, the NFL conversation the part. Um, so the question in the chat, I'll go ahead and bring that up so you can. Yeah. See go ahead. It is from Michael Gershie. Uh, he says, comment that Jimmy Johnson trading you was a stupid decision. Speaking for every Miami Dolphins fan, do you have a favorite Miami uh, favorite moment as a Dolphin? Well, I can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can appreciate the question. And, uh, you know, I can tell you my, my least favorite moment as a Dolphin was the trade. The day I got traded, it was uh, – you know, I'll kind of walk you through it a little bit. It, it was really caught me by surprise, to be honest with you. I had just signed a long-term extension with the team. Uh, there were some rumblings of Jimmy Johnson coming to take over for, for, for Coach Shula. I had played seven years for Coach Shula. He was the one that initially drafted me out of college. And uh, just a wonderful, wonderful, you know, coach, person, coach, mentor, whatever you want to call it. He was just a terrific guy all around. But uh, the trade that, you know, I heard some rumblings about the trade and I, I, I had a hard time believing it because I just signed a six year contract extension with the Dolphins. Um, so uh, I thought I was going to stay in Miami for a long time. I had been there seven years already. I just signed a six year extension. Um, I had a nice talk with Jimmy at the very beginning when we first met and he came onto our campus and uh, at the facilities there. And so I really felt very secure. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't even make it through the preseason. And my, uh, you know, my bags are getting packed and I was headed to Kansas City in the trade, which I think at the time, and I'm not even, I'm, I'm not even sure kickers have been traded today, but at the time, I know I think I was the very first kicker ever to be traded. And that says a lot for a kicker, because if, you, if a kicker's got leverage to be traded, you want to probably keep him, you know, that means he's probably pretty good. And I had a couple all pro years in Miami. And so I was really, really shocked when the trade happened. I was, you know, I, I was really hurt. Um, you know, I, I had established, a, uh, I had a lot of, you know, I was in the community a lot. I, you know, made a lot of friends down there and uh, really doing a lot of good things uh, down in South Florida. And, you know, obviously love being down there and living down there and, and who wouldn't. Right. So, but, uh, you know, you, you want to be at a place where you're wanted. And uh, obviously, had them trading me uh, out of Miami, they obviously didn't want me there anymore. And uh, Kansas City was a great fit for me. I went there back to the Midwest. And uh, Marty Schottenheimer was my coach in Kansas City. You know, rest his soul as well. You know, I played for two of the greatest coaches ever in the NFL, in Coach Shula and, you know, Coach Schottenheimer. What was so, Schottenheimer like? What was uh, Pete, What was Schottenheimer? Because we had him in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And I I love I love Schottenheimer. The only problem was he wanted to call his own plays, and he was a defensive coordinator or defensive minded. And we had Lily Afante, who was the offensive coordinator in Cleveland at that time. Or we had you know uh, Mack and Biner in the backfield, Bernie Kosar, QB. Uh, you know, and we had some great teams. And but what was he like personally? Because he seemed very cold when you looked at him. But he was probably just – that's the way he just looked with the blonde hair and blue eyes that he had. Well, you know, he might have been like that earlier in his days with Cleveland. You know, you're talking maybe the early 80s before he right. went over to Kansas City. Um, you know, if John Elway wasn't on the other, other side of the football and that drive never happened, you know, Cleveland goes to the Super Bowl perhaps. You know, or if Biner doesn't fumble that football at the goal line, do we have you to know, bring up all these great memories? Do we have to bring them up? <laughs> do we, do we have to? Just, we don't have to bring him up, but I got to tell you, Coach Schottenheimer, you know, is a, he was a great guy. And I got to know him very well. Um, he was one of the very first persons I talked to on the phone uh, when, I, when the trade happened. And um, uh, he made me feel very, very comfortable when I landed in Kansas City to meet him and the team for the first time. Um, and, uh, 
Unfortunately, he was there just three years before leaving to go to, I think, San Diego at the time. He ended up going to San Diego so, yeah. um, and then the broadcast booth. But, um, yeah, I mean, I can't say enough about him and uh, and the people in Kansas City. You know, they welcomed me with open arms. And, you know, I spent five years there, and I had some pretty good seasons there. And um, certainly, you know, they're having some great years now with uh, Mahomes and, uh, and, uh, and the guys they got there. So, but uh, – it's 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 been quite a ride to say the least. <laughs> right. So being a kicker, so being a kicker in the NFL, you know, when you're watching the games and everything, and the, say it's the last couple seconds of the game, and you're about to set up for the kick, do you prefer the other? Did you prefer for the other team to call the timeout to try to ice you, or or no? Did it work? Well, you know, you know, I think Jr. If you ask, I think if you ask different kickers uh, the same question, I think you might get different answers. Personally, for me, honestly, the timeouts, and I'm sure it's this way for a lot of the guys in the league, uh, even, you know, when I played back, uh, you know, back when I played or even today, um, some of these kickers are just, it's, it's, it's incredible to see the performance from some of these guys. These guys have gotten better and better over the years. And I thought when I was playing, and we had some pretty darn good kickers back in the day, Morton Anderson, uh, Nick Lowry, we had uh, – John Carney, you know, we had some really, really good kickers back in the day. Eddie Murray was another one. Mm -hmm. And to see these guys elevate the position to where they're, you know, the way they're kicking the ball today. And and I don't know where they're getting the leg strength. I don't know how Justin Kicker kicked a 66-yard field goal right here in Detroit this past year. Crazy. I just don't know how these guys are doing it. It's yeah. just it's really, remar it's really remarkable to, to see what they're doing today, you know. Or the ice in the veins of a lot of these cats, where I would, I, I would, I'm telling you, I would crap my pants. But McPherson from 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 the you know over there, I think you even said when we were talking a few weeks ago, this guy's got ice in his veins. There is no two ways; nothing phases this cat. Right, right, and I and I'll tell you, uh, you know, when I first entered the league, I'm going to tell you a funny story about you know I'm going to bring Cleveland back in the picture. When I first came in the league. Uh, you know, there was uh, a lot of talk in the newspapers down in South Florida that the only reason the Dolphins drafted me was because their kicker at the time, which was Fod Reves, he was hurt. And he was hurt going into camp, into mini camp. And so they felt like they needed to draft a guy. And I was the number one kicker on the board, although I went number two. Chris Jackie ended up going ahead of me to Green Bay. Uh, and I want to thank him for that. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, anyway, you know, when I went to Miami, um, I, I, I don't know what it was. I couldn't make a kick in the preseason. I was the only guy kicking for the team because Reves was hurt. And I had a chance to really prove myself and do well. And But for some reason, I just I had a really rough four games in the preseason. I think I might have been two for six, you know, uh, in, in those, you know, four games that we played. And I'll never forget Coach Shula coming up to me in the last preseason game and grabbing me by my helmet, by my face mask, and saying to me, listen here. He goes, you made this team. Now go out there and do what you're supposed to do. This is why we drafted you. You know, and I think that was it. I, I think I put so much pressure on myself to perform that I couldn't – I was outperforming. I couldn't do it. I was putting too much pressure on me. But then when he, when he engaged me and said those words to me, it's like a light bulb turned on and, and, and the rest was history. But speaking of Cleveland, Basil, four games into the season, I had a shot uh, in overtime with, at the end of the game with Cleveland and uh, made good on a kick, missed a kick earlier. And then Matt Barr, I believe, was their kicker, had a chance to win the game in overtime. He missed, giving me another shot to redeem myself, which I did, won the game. I honestly think if Matt Barr makes that kick in overtime – I don't know how much more football I would have played. I really don't because uh, had he made that kick and we lost that game, I think I was done. I was getting the pink slip the next day because uh, I just I was just you know I just wasn't proven you know. But wow. uh, things turned around real quick in my you know my second year in Miami. I was an All Pro kicker and things went really well and um, you know I started gaining that confidence and more and more just got uh, you know. The, the timeouts, back to your question, JR, the timeouts, you know, you could call as many as you want. Uh, they didn't really, 
you know, they didn't really do much to me, and I don't think they do much to guys today. You know, all it really does is give us more time to kind of lie, tee it up, and, and and get ready for the for the kick. You know, that's what I've heard. I've heard several kickers say that. In, yeah, you know, yeah. I think it just gives you more time to really think about what you're about to do and kind of, you know, if you're indoors, you don't have to worry much about the conditions, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you're outdoors, you know, it gives you a little more time to, you know, play with the wind or whatnot. Speaking of outdoors, how about in the snow? Say, like, for instance, this game here. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> this game was probably one of my – most memorable games and for a lot of dolphin fans too because uh you just don't see this too often when you go into dallas to play a football game you just don't see snow on the field very often and uh right. you know it's funny but you know the night before you know this was thanksgiving day i believe in 1993 and the mm -hmm. night before we flew in and and it was snowing in dallas and dallas doesn't get a lot of snow but we went out on the field a couple hours before the the field was covered in snow and ice and they had an ice storm a snowstorm and the game had to be played and uh leon let you know i want to thank leon again every thanksgiving he uh my name gets brought up because of him <laughs> but uh you know but leon and i are friends you know we're friends now so but uh you know that was just one of those things where um you know, you had to you had to play through it. You know, I had a chance to win it at the end. It got blocked. Leon wanted to go, re you know, recover the ball, and he slid into it, slid on the snowy field, and touched the ball. The ball became live. We we pounced on it at the goal line, and with three seconds left, I had a chance to win the game, which I did. And uh, ironically, I I got carried off the field, and they were saying the last player or coach to get carried off that stadium was Tom Landry when he retired. Wow. Really? And, uh, you know, so that was – that. you know, that uh, that made me feel pretty good. You know, that made me feel really good, as a matter of fact. But, wow. yeah, we came away with a big victory in Dallas that year. Um, and, uh, you know, just a wild and wacky game. Of course, every Thanksgiving it's – you know, it's – you know, they play it over and over again. It's one of the, one of the greatest highlights on Thanksgiving uh, Day, you know. Oh, I know they play it over and over. I'm a Cowboys fan, so that's why. Oh, I'm are you? <laughs> You're not mad at me, are you, Jr.? No, no, no. no I'm mad at Leon for sure. <laughs> and I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe that was one of the reasons why Jimmy Johnson got rid of me a couple of years later when he came over to Dallas or to Miami because he still held, held a grudge against me from the game in uh, Dallas. And I can understand that. And listen, yeah, you got maybe he did. To like you. <laughs> I mean, I can't blame the guy for that. <laughs> you have your, I don't know, is, is uh, Sylvia Stojanovic, is it Bel, Belgided or Belgid? Yeah, that is my sister, actually. And she's watching Belgid. from Arizona. Watching from Arizona. Yeah, go. Your sister. Go right ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Syl, how are you? Hope things are going well. We're freezing our asses <laughs> off in Detroit. Thank you so much for reaching out. <laughs> <laughs> Is she there? Yeah, she's actually watching the show right now. Oh, good. Good. Hi, Sylvia. <laughs> Want to say hi to her. I talked to her just yesterday, and I'm, you know, she's, uh, she's out there with her husband and her kids, and, uh, you know, we just got back from Arizona not long ago, and we'll be going back out there. I told her to make some room for me. I'm coming out. You know, the Super Bowl's out in Arizona next year, and I'm uh, with that combined with the uh, that uh, the Phoenix Open. Well, it's a lot of fun out there. Oh, look, you got you got others. Uncle Pete, we're watching. We love you, and it's from Nadia. <laughs> oh, Nadia, she's my niece. She's my niece. Oh, my sister. She's my sister's kid out in Arizona, and I love you too. Um, There's even, a, uh, how many Stojanoviches are there, for God's sakes? What is it? He's like, I, I got a big family, man. I, the family's so big, I don't even know half of them. But these ones I know, they're pretty close to me. <laughs> there, there's, there's, there's quite a few out there. Stojanovich in Macedonian translated into Smith it is what is that, just a normal <laughs> average name, for God's sakes. <laughs> it's not your typical last name, but there's a few of us, that's for sure. But there's a lot of families scattered around the nation. There's quite a few here in Detroit where I'm at now, but uh, there's there's quite a few uh, in Chicago and Arizona. 
Toronto's uh, there's quite a few in Toronto, um, but uh, yeah, they're they're all around. No, it was really it's it, it's really cool, Pete. What was you know? I got about of all the memories that you have in, in the NFL. I mean, what was some of the the ones that was there ever a coach or a player or you know how us ball players we used to hate you field goal kickers and we would yeah. hang here. <laughs> We would <laughs> anything that we do because we went through hell. Meanwhile, you guys just kick the ball. That's all you did was kick the ball. What were some of the memories that you have that you actually, you know, scared the hell out of you or actually, I mean, we could never do anything physically to you guys. Right. But right. emotionally, we could, we could make you suffer, but. You know, it, to me, I mean, was there any time where a coach where you said, man, that guy's a real ass, or I can't believe that this happened? Is there any horror stories that you just don't really see? You can read lips once in a while right. you know, off to the side, but was there anything? I mean, I always liked those stories, too. Well, you know, you know I got to tell you, and by the way, you uh, you look like you've been practicing that, by the way. That, that looks really good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> You're right. And, and back then, uh, you know, I think – instead of hate using the word hate i would use the word they didn't really respect us as much you know what i mean there was no respect uh i don't think the guys hated us as much as they just didn't respect us as much because we weren't you know we weren't in the drills we were just you know called on to kick the ball whenever we had a chance and we didn't go through all the uh training and the heat and the blood and the sweat and you know i think you know, quite honestly, it, and I'm 20 years, 22 years out of the game now. I've been retired now for 22 years. I want to say I don't think that goes on anymore with kickers, Basil. I really don't. I don't believe so. I don't want to believe it goes on because I just think kickers around the league are so respected today. Yeah. Because if you look at most of these games, and and I'll bring up, uh, you know, I'll probably bring up the playoff uh, uh, games, the divisional round this past year, and then even the conference championships. All these games were decided by kickers. And look at this kid in in Cincinnati. He was a he was a he was a uh, rookie out of Florida. He made all fourteen of his field goals. Might have led Cincinnati to the Super Bowl in Los Angeles. Um, you know, so. You know, I don't. I think there's more respect not only amongst the players but the coaches as well. You know, if you got a guy that's, and the other thing that helps with that respect factor, if you're doing a pretty good job, because there's a lot of pressure on kickers, and there is a lot of pressure for all the all the players out there. But when a kicker goes out there, the entire world is watching the kick. All eyes are on the kicker. You're there's, right. There's no way around it. So. Uh, there's a lot of pressure there, so you know a lot of times you're either the the goat or you're the you know you're the hero. So I think I think today I don't I don't know if kickers get that kind of reaction from players and coaches. I think there's a lot more respect because games today they are so close, and most of these games come down to these kicks. And um, I think the last thing any player and you would know you play yeah, any player sure. or coach would want to do is put any kind of play any kind of mind game with the guy who may be put out there with the game on the line. So right. you want to try to keep his mind. You want to keep his mind fresh. You want to keep him focused. You don't want him worrying about what his own teammates or coaches are saying to him. I think you stay away from him and you put a lot of respect into him and let him go out there and do his job. Just ask that kid from Cincinnati you know, Joe Burrow, you ask Joe Burrow who the MVP of his team is, he'll tell you that kid from uh, Florida, and I, I can't remember his name, but uh, – McPherson? Uh, Ferguson, I think it is, right? Is it McPherson? Uh, what, what, what a season he had. Yeah, but he's great. I, just he's think, I just think there's a lot of respect today than, the, than you're talking, you know, 30, 40 years ago when the, when the guys were kicking the ball. I'll okay. tell you what. I agree. Go ahead. I agree too. Um, and Janice, you know, we've been hogging the whole thing. If you have any questions, sweetheart, just jump in. Hi, Janice. Uh, it's good to hey, see you. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. Pete, are you ever <laughs> Feel free to chime in? Feel free to <laughs> chime in, Janice. Oh, it's tough around here, you know. <laughs> um, Pete, are you working on any type of a, of a book? Um, actually talking about some of the great stories and the great career that you have had, is there anything that, that your fans, our fans, can can basically 
you know, get their hands on? Well, they're, they're you know, it, it, the answer to your question is yes. I've been trying to work on a book, on a book for quite some time. You know, a, a lot of times, uh, you know, when, 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 you, you talk to athletes, whether they're football players, soccer players, baseball players, but you know, there, there's, there's, um, there's a lot behind the scenes. There's a lot that people just don't know, but, uh, I, I think I have a story to tell, uh, with, with, with my, with the sports, with my, with my, my, my personal life and just the things that I've come across, the encounters I've had in my lifetime, the success that I've had and some of the uh, you know, personal events in my life that took place that I had to struggle through. So, you know, I, you know, hopefully one day I can, I can come around to finishing that book uh, and, and, and maybe finding somebody that will help me get through, you know, to the finish line. Uh, but I would love to share my story. I think it's a really unique s story to tell uh, playing two sports and coming from the background that I did and, and just the way, you know, I grew up here in the Detroit area and, um, you know, with the family and, and, and all that. So uh, I think I got a great story to tell. I, I hope to get it out one day. I'm certainly, I've talked to authors. We've got a couple friends that have written books. I've had people reach out to me. Um, but I got to say, it is time consuming. You know, you got to, you know, I got my hands, you know, my hands, my plate's pretty full right now. You know, I'm trying to run my business and I'm coaching at the high school. I've got three daughters, a lovely, a beautiful wife. I've, we kind of got a lot going on and really you got to, you know, I, I would love nothing more than to sit down and spend some time on this book and just finish it and get it over the finish line, like I said. But uh, it may take a few more years. I don't know. But I really would uh, I really would like to get something out there and then eventually maybe get it on the big screen. I would like to see it come on the big screen. I would, too. I have a, I have a, one of our fans here, um, and he's a huge Pittsburgh fan. His name is Tasso Betis. And uh, Tasso goes, who do you think was the best kicker of all time? And I'm assuming not only by points, but, you know, through going through wear and tear. I mean, you and I were talking to stories about Garo Yepremium, that he was a good guy. And I knew him very well. You knew him very well. And yeah. he's one of the sweetest guys in the world. Yeah, fantastic guy. Yeah. Yep. Um, tell me who you think. Who is one of your favorites? Besides you yourself, know, of course. Well, you know, listen, I, you know, I, I had a, I, you know, I, I'm so happy with my career. I had a great career. I'm very happy with what I was able to accomplish. But um, you know, there there's so many guys, and and you know, it's it's you know, where do you start comparing kickers from 30 or 35 years ago to kickers today? You know, it's just not the kickers. It's not just that position. It's in every position. I mean, how do you compare Johnny Unitas to Tom Brady? How do you compare you know the great running backs from the day to the running backs today? You know, I mean. I mean, to me, the greatest running back of all time was Barry Sanders, and I'm, there's no question about that. I mean, I saw him play. I saw everyone else play. To me, Barry Sanders was the greatest running back. That I know for sure. But as far as kickers, you know, there were some great ones, and there, there's some great ones today. But in the era that I played, you're talking about Jan Stenerud, who was just until recently the only pure kicker in the Hall of Fame, you know, Um Morton Anderson, who just recently yeah. got into the Hall of Fame, he's the second pure kicker that got into Hall of Fame. Uh, who kicked in, you know, my 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 era, you know, Gary O'Premian, who kicked for the Dolphins back in the '70s in those championship years for the Miami Dolphins. Gary was not only a great kicker, but you know, we didn't have, you know, we didn't have the coaching. We didn't know anything. We didn't know. We knew how to kick a soccer ball. We didn't know how to kick a football. Nobody even knew. You know, these guys that were kicking, they didn't, they, they just, they didn't even know how to kick this football. All they knew was how to kick a soccer ball. So the coaching, the film sessions, the, you know, the video, the, you know, all the stuff that goes on today is so, you can't even compare it to the stuff that we didn't have access to back in the day. So to compare kickers then to the guys today, like today, Today, if you were to ask me the best kick in the league, it's Justin Tucker. It's hands down. It's Justin Tucker. Not to say there's not other great kickers in the league, but if I had to pick one, he's my guy. The guy can't miss. The guy can't miss. You know, when I, re when I retired back in 2000, I came out. I was one of the most accurate kickers in NFL history, and I was about an 80% guy making eight out of ten kicks. He's at 90%, although that's one more kick. Then my eight out of ten, he's making nine out of ten. 
that's really amazing. Even though it's yeah. just one more kick, it's really remarkable what he's doing. And so, um, you know, there's been a lot of great kickers, and I think they're only going to get better, Basil. I really do. I Like every other position, these guys are just getting big. They're bigger. They're stronger. They have access to more facilities. They have access to video. They can make corrections. They have better coaching today. You mm-hmm. know, back then, we didn't have much as far as kicking coaches. You know, I mean, these guys didn't know a whole lot about kicking coaches back then. Mm-hmm. I remember in college, my kicking coach was my – Offensive line coach. He didn't know much about kicking. <laughs> so, but, you know, he was a great guy, and he, he he was a great guy, and he coached me as much as he as much as he knew, as much as he could. So there was no special kicking coaches, you know, and that there's really not that position in the NFL even today. I don't think there's a kicking coach. I think most of those coaches are special teams coaches. So. Uh, and I, 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 you know, I bet that a lot of these guys have never kicked a football in their life to, to try to well, teach. It's teach so them. funny. How do you have an offensive, an offensive flying coach be your actual kicking coach? What are you going to give a forearm shiver at the end of right. your? <laughs> well, and, and that's that's exactly my point. So you know, we grew up in a time, you know, back in the seventies and eighties, where we just didn't have a lot of access to a lot of things, you know, and. Even videos and, 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 you know, just film and studying, being able to study a practice or go back and look at your, you know, your your reps, you know, or look at practice and correct, make corrections and sit there and jot things down. And, you know, Basil, we just didn't have that stuff. And things are so advanced today. And, and that's why you've seen these kickers and players in general getting better and better because they have asked. I mean, have you walked into an NFL facility lately? Have you seen these places? They're remarkable. Yeah. They're abs- I mean, I would. I wouldn't even want to leave. I'd want to just stay there and, and spend all my time there. You don't have to leave anymore. But back <laughs> in the day, you couldn't wait to get out of there because we, you know, we didn't have the nicest of facilities. So you really couldn't wait to get out of there. No, too. And late. I don't mean it in a disrespectful way. I'm just being honest with you. Today, you take a look at these new facilities, and heck, look at the new stadiums that are being built around the league. I mean, you could spend the rest of your life in SoFi Stadium if you wanted to. You never have to leave. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, honestly, have you seen the inside of that place? It looks like a Las Vegas hotel, you know, with the amenities in there. It's unbelievable. So, you know, there's access to a lot of different things today. Kickers can take care of themselves better, just like, you know, the other uh, players. You know, they have the training facilities. They have the hot tubs, the cold tubs. They have a lot more basil than we ever had, and yeah, uh, they just they sure. take care of themselves more. You know? There's no two ways about it. Pete, is there any website or anything that you got for your business that that you want to take uh, your fans uh, to? Uh, I, I don't have a – not necessarily I don't. I uh, just have my, my, uh, my email uh, accounts and addresses there. Um, you know, I've been in the restaurant business and Basil, I've had you at the restaurant so many times at the comedy club and, you know, let's not, let's not, let's not fail to talk about that a little bit, Basil. I know you want to talk football, but I gotta, I gotta be, uh, you know, I gotta be, uh, I gotta share a little commentary with the, the people listening tonight and what a great job you did for us and <laughs> all the times that you used to come out to Joey's comedy club and kickers and, right. and, uh, you know, there wasn't an empty seat in the house and I gotta be honest with you. You know it as well as I do. And we always used to look forward to having you out there. Uh, You you were always probably our biggest draw. You know, we had a lot of great comedians, but I got to say, Basil, when you came into town, my friend, there wasn't an empty seat and and people were waiting to get in and they just couldn't get in to see you. But it was a pleasure working with you, man. I got to I got to put that in there for you. I, I appreciate that. I remember one time you came in. Oh God! You had uh, you you um, and of course Billy ran it too, and you were you were there always. But uh, and then you had the uh, the um, the Illiches came in, and you were it was you the Illiches. So I got the owners of basically the Detroit Tigers, the Detroit Red Wings, you, yeah. a couple of players, and they're sitting in the back, and I'm like. That's not enough pressure. Let me see. Let me see. Where, where's Jesus sitting right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Illiches, you know, they're um, you know they're Macedonians like us. Yeah. My parents grew up with the, they're you know the Mike and Marianne. My parents were good friends with them. We knew the mm-hmm. family when we were kids. They're members of our church. Uh, they've done so much for the Detroit community. Obviously, as you know, uh, with the Red Wings, with the Tigers, you know they. 
they you know they have all the little caesar's pizzerias and they've just been so they've meant so much to the city of detroit and they've done so much for the community here uh it's unprecedented in what they've done and uh they brought the stanley cup into the restaurant one year and it was a real honor and pleasure to have them all there and sharing the stanley cup with uh with our How customers cool is that to bring the stanley <laughs> cup <laughs> yeah. into the place. how cool is that you know that was really cool uh, to imagine i mean coolest cousin played for the red wings right chris and you and i think talked about this chris chelios right so yep. chelios would come in there and you know i saw him when he comes in he goes hey basil how you doing i said well you know hug kiss nothing not so much okay i gotta get you in the penalty box to get any type of an affection from you but you know <laughs> your place you know i i cut my cd my first CD that went uh, international, national, and it was cut at your place at Kickers. Yeah, I and, believe it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I loved it, and you have always been a, just a, a good friend, buddy. Uh, and I mean that you and Billy. I'm not going to get Billy out of this because Billy is just, you know, every time, hello, baby, how you doing, baby? You doing okay, baby? Yeah, you call yeah, me his baby, favorite, his favorite word. word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Listen, man, I, I want to thank you, uh, Pete. You, um, you know, you're, you're a good friend. I loved working with you. I love working for you. And um, you have always treated me with uh, with all the respect in the world. And I loved hanging out with you as well. Thank you, baby. Um, thank you're you. a good man. You're a good family man. And uh, it was just, it just, it's a lot of fun. Uh, JR was looking forward to this. Janice, who is, you couldn't stop her to you know, ask any more questions. <laughs> Janice, you got to ask me one question. You've got to ask me one question, Janice, please. All right. I, I will ask you one question. How Give much have you written of your book? Well, honestly, how far have I gotten with the book? I've gotten uh, through my, uh, um, I've gotten through K through 12. I just, uh, I'm, I'm, up, I, I'm up to my college career in my book. I'm All right, my, there you go. I can ask kind of you a, a dozen questions about that. It's kind of a, it's kind of a timeline, uh, the way I was, you know, uh, rolling it out. It was kind of a you know, time timeline kind of thing. But uh, I've gotten to the college phase of my career. Um, and, um, uh, you know, again, like I said, I've been sidetracked. I've been super busy with a lot of different things, and it's just been hard. I do want to pick it up and, and move forward on it and hopefully uh, finish it because it's, um, I think, a really an incredible story, an amazing story. You know, again, it's just not about the success that I've had in my life, but it's some of the tragedy that I've had to endure through my lifetime as well. So um, well, I, keep I think- Keep chipping uh, away at it at least. Keep chipping away at it. I, I will. I'll continue to, to work on it and uh, you know, hopefully bring it to, to everyone one day and- um, share my share my share my story yeah janice is a great publisher by the way i just want to say uh so if you need someone to actually publish the book uh janice is right there she's wonderful she is the glue and this is no bs she is the glue that basically keeps all of us together uh she's the voice of reason and um you know sometimes so no <laughs> always um listen, his wife oh. thinks i'm crazy <laughs> well, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's another story for another time. Uh, right. April 29th, dude. I'm going to be in De Detroit. I'm going to be in Detroit uh, at a place called Andiamos. And um, yes. they, okay, so I want you. I want you to be my guest uh, over there. And uh, you and Billy uh, come with your wives and everything. I want you to come down. I appreciate there. it, Basil. I seen I seen it on your calendar and. Uh, uh, if there's a, a definitely a way for us to get out there, we will come out there and see you, my friend. I appreciate it. Out of my brother. Listen, man, uh, Pete, on behalf of myself, JR, and of course, Janice, uh, and all the listeners and people from all over the world, because we get them from Australia, all the way through South Africa, all the way throughout Europe and North America. That's I want to thank you for, for actually being on this show and uh, being a great part of A Pinch of Basil. Dude, I, I, hopefully we can have you back one day soon because I That's know fine. we didn't even scratch the yeah, surface. Yeah. yeah, no, there's a, there's a lot to talk about, and I know we don't have all the time in the world to do it. But, uh, again, I appreciate you having me on the show, Basil. Uh, JR, it was a pleasure speaking with you and meeting you. And Janice, yeah. uh, the same with you. Uh, I, you. I just, you know, I'm very grateful that you had me on the show tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure, uh, you know, just I'm um, happy to be here with you. Thank you. 
Thanks so much, Pete. Love you, brother. Talk to you soon. Love you guys. Thank you. Take Take care, care, you guys. Thank you very much. Wow, what a great show, folks. I'll tell you what, you have someone like Pete Stianovich who comes on and one of the greats, the NFL greats, and proud to call him a friend. And I still, I'm still, i still bitter about the $100 I threw at him because he got me sitting there just pisses me off. Hey, we got another great show next week. Uh, Mr. Bob Golick will be with us. We're excited about Bob being with us, an all-time great nose tackle, an uh all American football player from Notre Dame and a national champion and wrestler, a champion in wrestling for Notre Dame as well. Uh, uh, another good buddy. Um, you know, it's it's kind of funny meeting these guys, um, and I'm I'm really really happy about uh, the type of people. And Bob is also, if you remember, remember head of the class. He he was the teacher and head of, one of the teachers, and uh, I think it's the head of the class. Is that what it was? Okay. Um, Ask him about it. Pardon me. Hopefully, we'll get to ask him a little bit. Yeah, oh, there's no two ways about it. If I let you guys ask a question. <laughs> but um, Well, you did let the audience ask a little bit, so that was good. Well, I think I'm a giver, you know. Yeah, and, I know you are. <laughs> and for all the listeners that we've had there, and I guess i got to go all through. I mean, we had a lot of them tonight, and I want to thank you all uh, for coming on. Uh, Kathy Cece from Australia was listening. How you doing, sweetheart? Uh, let me see. Nicholas Arvaris, uh was with us. Uh, Mike Gersh, who was the author, um, you know, that we had on there, on here on our show before. Tasso Betis, um, let me see. There's a bunch of them. I don't have my glasses on. All the Stojanovic family. Oh, my God. Is there enough of them, for God's sakes? Okay. I love them all. Hey, folks, listen. Go to Basil Fans. Follow me on Basil Fans, either on Twitter, Instagram, uh, or on Facebook, of course, at Basil Fans. And also, hey, listen, seriously, go to YouTube. Uh, go to ba- at, to our YouTube account at Basil the Comedian, and go ahead and actually uh, subscribe to A Pinch of Basil. That's what you got to do. And this way we can go ahead and get other great guests. I don't know if it will be as great as Pete, but I'll tell you what, it was that was one hell of a great interview. I think he he's was great. a lot of yeah, fun. He really was. Yeah. He's and it, he's a real sweetheart, very humble for a guy who uh, was as great as he was at you know in, at the top of, uh, at the top of his uh, career. He was one of the best, right? Definitely. Yeah. yeah so really uh, we're excited about that. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, well, you said so much. I did. No, I did. I enjoyed it. I don't have to talk. <laughs> what you should do follow all the talking. No, you you should really follow up with him because I'll tell you what. His story is an unbelievable story. You it's know, always sad. about the story. Yeah, and uh, and I, yeah, that, that that would make a phenomenal book because uh, some of the uh, trials and tribulations that uh, he and his family went through and everything. So, yeah. anyway, uh, listen, folks, what a great show! What a great time! Thank you so much for being on a pinch of basil. We'll see you next Wednesday with Bob Golick, an all-time NFL great. Uh, played for the Cleveland Browns and also for, of course, those pesky Oakland Raiders of the time with the bad boys <laughs> that he was. Anyway, listen, I love you all. On behalf of JR, myself, Janice, I, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being part of the show tonight. Peace. See y'all. Bye.